And then there's another option, which is mediation, where you go to a person who serves as a neutral party who is going to help you reach all the decisions you need to reach in order to have a comprehensive divorce agreement. So when I serve as a mediator, I do use my background as a divorce attorney and a litigator to help you um, understand the world of options, help you understand what might happen if you go to court. The truth is that what might happen when you go to court, as Nina could tell you, is a lot of things. It depends on the judge you get. It depends on the judge's mood that day. It can depend on a lot of things. There, are, there is certainly examples to refer to. In some specific areas, there might be a very strong body of examples where you can pretty much predict what's going to happen. But a lot of things, it's just luck of the draw. So what I'm able to do is tell you a variety of ways it might play out in court if that will help you get past impasse. So your mediator is somebody who provides information but not strategic advice. They're not somebody who's gonna take either one of you aside and say, I think you could do a little bit better on this part, or hey, uh, have, could you maybe rethink that? I think maybe you're giving, you know, I think that that's a really a role for an advocate. That's really a role for an attorney. So when you're going through mediation, it might be helpful to have somebody that you consult with along the way, like a Nina, somebody who is um, respectful of the mediation process who won't try to constantly like defer you into court. Um, there are some lawyers who are just most comfortable when they're in control. Like we're lawyers, <laughs> we like to be in control. Um, so you want an attorney who's going to respect that you've chosen a certain process and really help you stay in that process. Um, to be successful in mediation, you don't have to agree. You don't have to be agreeable. You just have to be able to be honest and fair. And you need to, and I can help you in those areas where you don't agree, come to a, a compromise. And really, in court, that's often what happens, is the judge finds some fairness in the middle anyway. Collaborative divorce is not mediation. There's no neutral in the room. You each hire your own lawyer, but your lawyers commit to never litigate. So if you abandon the collaborative divorce process, what happens is you have to hire new lawyers. You both hire new lawyers. So that's expensive and not, it really incentivizes everybody to reach a settlement. Um, and that is another process option that people have chosen and I think it's a really great, a really great way to do it. Um, it's just a little different. You can have four-way meetings where both of you bring your lawyers or your lawyers can meet without you. Litigation doesn't mean that you have to go to court. Litigating attorneys, and I also say this to clients, is that if you can get two lawyers in a room who can negotiate on behalf of their clients and come to the middle and meet, meet you can have a quasi-peaceful resolution of your issues. Not every divorce case in our office, many of them don't go to court. Uh, people learn to talk with their lawyers and their lawyers represent their needs and their wants and their rights with other lawyers and we try to work out reasonable solutions. I think the biggest difference between Casey and I is the fact that I represent my client. I am obligated, mandated by ethics and by rules of court to make the strongest fight, to take the strongest position I can to get my client the best deal. And why we all say that, you know, we want to be reasonable and we want to be equitable. I want to fight for my client. I want my client to have that inch ahead of the other party if I can, or at least know that my client will be safe and secure because I've done everything I can to make their position as firm as possible. Mm -hmm.